All right, I am the starting player. That's nice. And this hand is nice. We have a turn one Deathrite Shaman. We can do follow up with a Kataki or Kinnan and the Biller, Biller self forward like a Grand Abolisher. I'm really happy about having that in my hand too. Could we have see a better hand like we could Mulligan, but this is a hand that will work out fine. So I want to keep it. Okay, uh, this is my opening seven and I think it's pretty good. We don't have card draw, but uh, we have a way to punish people and uh, get counters on our Red Terror. Uh, we have a Dockside, which is always great. We have Fury, which is excellent interaction. Uh, we have enough lands. Yeah, I think this is a reasonable keep, so we are going to keep it. Okay, first seven. Uh, this is turn three commander, and uh, then play an extra land. That's not horrible, but it's not good, so I'm gonna find something better. Speaking of something better, kinda. We have a turn one dork, so three lands, so we can do XL a land, or the abrupt decay maybe? We kind of want to... No, I actually don't think this is a good hand. Just because it's a 7. We don't really have a way to like get out Hulk fast in this hand. We do have the pattern, but the pattern doesn't actually get Hulk because Hulk is in our hand. I'll be honest, there might be some line here that I don't see because I'm not experienced on the deck. That's definitely a possibility. Like we could do turn 1 Dork, just have a land untapped, turn 3, turn, turn 2 Commander, and then maybe get the mana somehow for Hulk and attack. That maybe works? I will try this hand. We have a lot of draws to make this hand actually decent, but I might be very punished for keeping this hand. I, I think this hand has a high risk to do nothing, but also has a decent chance to have a payoff, because we can do, with the Pattern Rebirth we can find the Body Launderer discarding the Hulk and then reanimating the Hulk. We need to find the Sack Outlet for that to work. That's not the Phyrexian Tower. But I think it's worth trying. We'll see. I think I'm going to get punished, but uh, you never know until you try. Go ahead, death. Alrighty then. Ruin Megatron, bless us with a good hand. If this was a black land, we could have turned do a turn one, but no, we have too many colorless lands. Ah, uh, not good enough. Let's try to go another six. Ooh, oh, oh yes, yes, yes. We are keeping this because we have also a Poseidon and a Rain of Rain of is the last one we actually don't need because we don't want to sack our lands, but we have basically two Mox Diamonds. That's cool. That's cool. Move to the bottom of my library. And this is the opening hand. I'm keeping happy days. So the pregame of the game is Leyline of the Void. <laughs> So no graveyard shenanigans from you guys. Uh, I also have a pregame though. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that card is very bad news for me. This is not things we like to see. However, I actually have a pregame as well. I will put this gemstone caverns into play. And this was just really funny because it almost... I will exile this abrupt decay that almost solves the problem, but it actually, actually doesn't. <laughs> Almost, but not so close yet so far. So I don't care about Leyline at all. I'm happy. I will draw a card. I'm really happy about that draw. I'm going to play this Blood uh, Badlands, tap it for a Deathrite Shaman, and let's also cast a Mana Crypt and uh, pass turn. I will draw a card. That's a good card. I will play the Scalding Tarn, uh, crack it for a Mountain, play a Mox Amber, pass turn. Take my turn. That, that's a decent draw, not gonna lie. Play a Bountiful Promenade, tap one green for a Birds of Paradise, then tap another green for a Elvish Mystic, and then I'll pass the turn. I will take my turn. So I will start with a new card called the Mikosynth Gardens, which can be tapped to become something. Like for example, when I will cast this Mox Diamond and discard this Emergent Zone, now I can tap the Mikosynth Gardens and basically make it another Mox Diamond. Now I have two Mox Diamonds. What a funk. And then I will just pass the turn. So I'm gonna go to my turn and draw a card. Now, fun fact is that Defra Chaman doesn't do anything versus Le with a Leyland of the Void they played. So that's kind of sad. I'm being stacked out in a kind of strange way. Heads, I take damage from the Mana Crypt. I take heads, I take free damage. You, you still have my one land I'm giving you. I'm gonna play a Tundra. And then we're gonna make Revenge. So I guess making that creature into no that land into an artifact isn't that great if i put a kataki into play so at the beginning of each player's upkeep pay one mana for artifact or sacrifice those artifacts then i pass turn bye mox amber draw a card that's not what you want to see all right i'm gonna play mountain i'm gonna tap two for a harsh mentor and now he says uh whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact creature or land on the battlefield if it isn't a mana ability harsh mentor deals two damage to that player and i will pass the turn move to my turn Okay, so that's Hulk in hand, pattern, and nature's lore. Or wait, and natural order in my hand. What is this? <laughs> why, why is this happening to me? 
My board state is horrible. I don't like my position at all. I do have a choice here between either developing my commander. The problem is my commander has to sacrifice a card to draw, to draw. So because I have to sacrifice a creature or a land when I attack with my commander, it's not a very good engine for me. So while I could develop it and try to do stuff with it, with it it's stack, see? So it's not horrible. But I don't really think we need stacks here. Like, stacks doesn't really interrupt mons at all. Uh, so I think the better call is to natural order here to find Orn Frost Fang, because that's an actual draw engine that will probably get us into a game. And funnily enough, I will want to sack Birds of Paradise, because Birds doesn't draw me cards. Yeah, so I think that's our best choice. We're kind of in a bad spot here, but I think Orn Frost Fang might get us back into the game. So let's go for that. I will play a Frixen Tower and for turn. Tap 4 to catch cast a natural order sacrificing my birds of paradise. Yeah, very scary with the <laughs> ley line in play. Yeah, natural order resolves, going into exile. I will put a Oron Frostfang into play. Then I would like to move the combat. I will attack death for one. Trigger, I'll draw a card with Oron Frostfang. That is a really good find considering the game state we're in. Uh, yeah, it's pretty good. That's I'm very, I'm very happy about that draw. Uh, I would have loved to find the Hulk, but that's not that great on this board. I mean, yeah, Hulk doesn't do anything. Yeah, exactly. Pass the turn. Go ahead, death. Hold on, hold. Everybody, hold your horses. End of turn. No, 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 no effects. We're, we're fine with this. I, I was... Uh... Uh, prepared somehow when Mons played They're the touching cut. my Kataki. I will pay for life and I will dismember it. It has been ripped to shreds and it goes to exile. Exactly. Never to be seen again. I'll play Boseju who shelters all and then I will tap these two and play a Grim Monolith. And with one card in hand, I will pass. I take three damage from the Mana Crypt and I draw a card for turn. I'm gonna play this Boseju who, sh who endures as a land drop. Green. Mons, no, Blue. why? Leyline, Mons, please. <laughs> and I'm gonna play my Kinan Bounder Prodigy. And I pass the turn. Draw a card. Ooh, that's a good card if Leyline wasn't on the field. Homeward Path is land for turn. Dockside Extortionist. I got four. I got one. Uh, I will spend four of them to cast my commander, the Red Terror. Then I will go to combat and we will attack death for two. Living up to my name, I see. And then uh, the Red Terror will get a plus one, plus one counter. I will pass the turn. Start by going to combat. I will swing three at death because he has no blockers. I have two triggers, so I will draw through two cards. I will be a bit sad, but not too sad. I will play this Tarnish Citadel. Then I will take three damage to tap this red green, and I will cast a Crop Rotation, sacrificing it. Finding a Gaius Cradle, have one green floating, casting a Thalia and the Gitrog Monster, and then with the green floating, I'll cast this Elasaur Shepherd, and then I'll pass the turn. Lose two life and cast Starscream the backside of it, and it will come tap because of, you know, Thalia. So it cannot attack and give the Monarch to anyone. Point on, pass the turn. I go heads again, I take three more damage. Add Crypt, stop doing that. Untap and draw a card. This is a cool card. It's a great card, but against this pod, it's not that good. We are one mana off from activating Kinan because this does not tap for mana because of Leyline of the Void. Leyline of the Void is hurting me more than I thought it would, actually. Monst, I have one land you can use. Wait, you have a land graveyard. in your graveyard? I, I oh, told it's you that on your opponents, of course. Genius. Yeah, yeah. I I have one land to give you, but only one. I will use that one, and uh, we're gonna activate uh, Keenan here, I think. Looking at the top, one, two, three, four, five. So here is a non-human Mayhem Devil. After I get my Mayhem into play, tap because of Thalia, I pass. On your end step, I would like to invoke Fury, uh, getting rid of Underworld Breach. Alright, I'll get rid of Kinnon, and I'll get rid of uh, Elvish Mystic, and I'll get rid of Alasaur Shepherd. Kinnon is uh, dead. All in the beautiful exile. <laughs> Wait, go to my turn. Uh, we're gonna play a Gemstone Caverns. Uh, we'll play a Fellwar Stone. Red Terror is coming at Mons, and these two are coming at Death. I take the damage. Six. Right, and then the Red Terror will get three more counters. Pass the turn. Land for turn would be a Wooded Foothills. I will go to combat. Death for four, Mons for two. I take two. Attack trigger, I will sacrifice the Wooded Foothills, sure. And I will draw a card for Gitrox trigger and draw two cards off the Orange Frost Tank. I'm gonna deal one damage to your face, Pontus, from Mayhem Devil. Sure. I 
take one. In post combat main, as per Sentinel, I will tap a green for a Avacyn's Pilgrim. Pass the turn. My turn. Yay, I get a tapped homeward path myself. Goody. Compass, take two in the air, please. No blocks, take two. You become the monarch. But then we're not done yet. In main, I'll take two more damage. One, two, three, six. I'll cast Professor Onyx, also known as Liliana. And you know what? I'll minus free her. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with the greatest power among creatures that player control. Uh, this is going to trigger my Mayhem Devil three times, actually, because it's going to see itself and two other things being sacrificed. So I'm going to put on the Harsh Mentor and one damage to Esper Sentinel, killing those two creatures with my Mayhem Devil here. And I'll sacrifice Kitrug because I have to. And now Pontus is the Monarch, feel free to attack him. And I will pass the turn. <laughs> I take damage, I have flipped. I've done 12 damage to myself with this crypt. It have dealt damage every single time. Draw a card for turn. Land. Taiga. Pontus. I'm attacking with my Deathrite Shaman at you, Pontus. You're the monarch. No blocks. Take one. I become the monarch. I'm gonna cast Cise. And then I'm gonna cast a Findhorn Elves. And then I'm gonna pass the turn and draw a card because of Monarch. And uh, go for it, Jordan. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna tap three mana. Uh, I'm gonna cast Blank Goblin. Uh, one of my stickers is Guacamole. So he's gonna become the Guacamole Goblin, which has five vowels. So I will add five red mana to my mana pool. Then I will tap my Homeward Path and recast the Red Terror. And then I'll go to combat death for one and pass the turn. Go to combat. I'll swing three at death. Trigger, trigger. I will draw two cards. Ancient two. Tap two white to cast this Skyclave Apparition. Skyclave Apparition will ETB. On ETB you can exile target non-land permanents with CMC four or less. And at least they get a XX token, which is the CMC of the permanent. I would like to exile that CSA. Wait, what? There's a ley line. You can remove the ley line that you've been dreaming about. I can remove the ley line! You... <laughs> yeah? What are you doing? Don't be smart. I'm being blind. I, I, in my head, it was CMC 3. I, I even read the 4. I just yeah. was like, it's it's 3 or less, so I can't exile Don't the Don't touch line. my... I kind of want uh, you to do the, do the CSA <laughs> though, because I think you really want that to be gone, but yeah. Uh, yeah, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm, I'm touching the ley line. <laughs> no, take the CC. No, 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 no. It's, it's four. Apparently, I, ca I can read sometimes. <laughs> apparently, not now though. <laughs> Thank Mons, you, Mons. Mons, keep that in, please. Keep that. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm gonna make you leg help you win, I guess. But ley line is gone. Tap my Frexen Tower, sacrificing the Avacyn's Pilgrim for two black. I will then tap Chaos Curl, because the extra one doesn't really matter, uh, to cast this Body Snatcher. Uh, so Body Snatcher will ETB, and I will discard this Protein Hulk to not sacrifice it. To them, I would like to pass the turn. So if Body Double dies, you get Hulk into play and wins, which you can do on your whenever you untap your Frexen Tower. Yes. No problem, Mons, I will attack you for two in the air because I want to take the monarch. You get a monarch. I take two. Then I will activate Professor Onyx. Look at the top three cards of my library, put one of them into my hand and the rest into my graveyard. So look at one, two, three. I will put this little tag key into my graveyard and this form of the black, black, uh, black rose. I already am the monarch. Polluted Delta. Crack Polluted Delta. Go to 13. I will find a swamp and then I will tap the swamp, the homeward path. Good place we chose, and I'll cast this animate dead targeting protein hulk. No response. You get the hulk. It's a 5 6, but it, it's funny when it dies. End of turn, I do get to draw a card, which is what I took the monarchy for. And then I will trigger Star Scream and Pontus take two. Take two. Okay, I actually take damage from the mana crypt again. Five times in a row. That's a crazy. Untap and draw a card. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good draw. I'm gonna cost something like that instead. Oxide. I will respond. I will sacrifice my treasure, tap my follower stone for a Tibalt's Trickery. Yeah, that hurt. That was an That's annoying. So Tibalt's Trickery will resolve. I didn't expect that, I gotta admit. So uh, my Oxide is counterspelled. Give me a random number. A random number is two. So mill one, two, lands. So we are casting a Soul Ring. Two mana Soul Ring. I gotta admit, that's not really what I wanted. I'm gonna cast a Wandering Archaic. And after that, I pass the turn. 
Pontus, I'm going to attack you with the Red Terror and my Guacamole Goblin, and we'll throw the Dock Side in there too, why not? Block the Dock Side with Kaikle Operation, but the other two will get through. So you will take seven? Yes. And I will get three counters on my Red Terror, and Dock Side will die. Then I'm going to play an Eric Mesa and crack it for a Mountain and Passenger. I would like to move to combat. Mons for two with a two six. And Jordan for four with these two twos. I'll take two. Triggers. I will draw three cards. Uh, I would like to cast this Grand Abolisher. But I'll cast this Vampiric Tutor, which will trigger Professor Onyx, making you all lose two and I gain two life. Mons, would you like to copy Vampiric Tutor? I see what you're doing there. I would like to use my Wandering Archaic to copy that. Yes. Doesn't really matter, but yeah, I will, I will tutor for something. But I, I won't be able to interact during this turn if he wins. So Grand Abolisher resolves. Like to sacrifice, I guess, the Skyclay Operation to Friction Tower, making two black. But before I'll tap my Guy's Cradle for four green. So we'll have four green, two black floating. Use one black, one green. Cast Dance of the Dead on, say, Jordan's dock side. I cannot eat that thing because of Grand Abolisher, so it happens. Uh, and treasure count is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Creating eight treasures with Dockside. Use my four mana floating. Pattern of Rebirth, targeting targeting the Dockside. I'll then crack a treasure to cast this Carrion Feeder. I will sacrifice the Dockside. Pattern trigger with result. Finding a Elas Ill Core. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under my control, I gain one life, and whenever a creature I control dies, each opponent loses one life. Sacrifice Body Snatcher to carry on feeder, making Mons lose a life. So I'll sacrifice two treasures to cast a Aladarmis Call. Mons may copy this. Uh, yes, I am going to search out for a card. I need to read Grand Abolisher again here. I actually do have a great card versus you that will literally stop you, but I'm one man off. Okay. So, yeah, it's it's literally, if I could activate that guy for mana, which I can't because of Grand Abolisher. So in my deck, I have Nimble oh, Pilferer, yeah, yeah. and I'm lacking one blue mana, which I could get from Deathrite Shaman. But I will I will get the Nimble Pilferer to my hand uh, regardless, and you can resolve your Eldamir's Call, because I am actually allowed to cycle this through a Grand Abolisher. Yeah, I'll find Safi Eric's Daughter. Pay two treasures for two whites, tap for two colorless, losing two life, and another mana to cast a Karmic Guide. ETB, I can reanimate the Skyclave, killing the Deathrite Shaman, I guess. Um, then I'll sacrifice two more treasures to cast Safi. And from here, I'll present a loop where I sacrifice Safi, targeting Karmic Guide, sacrifice Karmic Guide to carry on feeder, trigger Safi, get back Karmic Guide, which will return Safi, and I loop these two to kill you with Allies Ilkor. Good game. Oran Frostfang, uh, in my opinion, 100% uh, won that game. Uh, MVP of this match, I think. I have to agree. Oran Frostfang was the kill, and there was nothing Mono Black could have done to stop it. I present. Happy for the win, Pondus. You did it. Yeah, uh, two card combos are nice, especially when one of the pieces is in the command zone, but Mono Red has a lot of difficulty searching for it, and both games showed that. So, uh, Red Terror is still fun, not good in CDH. Yeah, I agree. Ron Frost Frank kind of carried me there, but to be honest, Team Nine Command Zone would have done the same and would have been easier to find. I wouldn't have had to use the Nature's Lord just to find her. And Ron Frost Frank plus Team Nine, that would have been some value. <laughs>